Hi, my name is Ryan. Today I'm experimenting with Super Black Paints. So this is Black 3.0 from Culture Hustle. And this is Maso Black from Koyo Japan. These are both acrylic paints that claim to be the darkest acrylic paint in the world. Black 2.0, the predecessor to this, was made in response to the existence of a material called Vanta Black, which is the blackest material in the world is not a paint that's used for scientific applications it's more of a thin polymer coating but these are acrylic paints and this claims to be the darkest commercially available black paint in the world this claims to be darker and there's tons and tons of videos all over youtube of people painting different things with them comparing them uh, one interesting quirk i found with these super black paints is that People who make things like telescopes and other optics love them because they absorb most light and are really good for preventing for preventing light bleed in things like camera applications. But model makers tend to hate them because they don't look very black. An interesting quirk of, of flat black paints is that in certain contexts, flat black can actually look kind of gray. Whereas a glossy black, which objectively reflects more light, looks darker. It's just a trick of the eye. But today, I'm not looking at these for how dark they are. I'm looking at for them for how much light they absorb and turn into heat. I want to see how hot these get in direct sunlight. Because I'm hoping to use one of these to coat the, the plumbing for a water solar heater. I'll also be comparing it to regular dollar store acrylic paint, a typical flat black spray paint. So you typically use a flat black spray paint on a solar water heater, but I want to see if these perform significantly better, because if so, it might be worth using these so that I can get more performance out of the solar water heater on colder days. Now these are quite expensive. This had to be imported from Japan and this had to be imported from the UK. And so both cost close to about 70 Canadian dollars for these small amounts. These both, after paying for shipping, cost around 70 to 80 dollars to import. So they're not cheap, whereas this is literally a dollar. And this, I think, cost five or six dollars. And a lot more volume here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this copper pipe and cut it into five sections. One for each of the paints and one control that's going to be left bare copper. I'm going to prime and paint this. The reason why I'm priming this is because of the fact that none of these acrylic paints are designed to be painted directly on metal. So I don't think they'll stick all that well. So I'm going to prime it first to give them the best chance of sticking. Keep in mind that these paints are absolutely not made for this kind of purpose. They're very delicate paints. And then I'm going to expose these to direct sunlight and take, uh, take temperature readings off them throughout the day. First, let's cut this pipe up. Okay, so now I have five pieces of copper, uh, each four inch, inches long. You may have noticed that when I was cutting it, there were no sparks. So copper and bronze don't spark when they're being cut, which makes them great for making tools in places where sparks cause an explosion risk, like oil field and stuff like that. Don't use a grinder to cut copper pipe that you're actually going to put in a plumbing system. I'm going to put metal shavings everywhere. They actually make little pipe cutter things, but I can't find one right now. Anyway, you may notice that some of these are a bit crusty. And I don't want that affecting the test, so I'm going to soak them in vinegar for a while. Okay, now we'll leave these soaked for a couple hours to get all that corrosion off. So they're all nice and clean now. Set aside one as a control. I'm going to wipe down these four with some rubbing alcohol, go outside and spray them down with some primer. And then we'll come back and paint them with the acrylic paints. Okay, so now the four pieces to be painted have been hit with two coats of self-etching primer. The spray paint I've already done because I was already outside spray painting, so I've already put two coats of the black on. Now I'm going to start applying the acrylic paints. I've labeled the tray here for each one. So we've got the spray paint, black 3.0, the miso, the dollar store, and then the control, which of course gets no paint. We've got three separate brushes. Now, according to the instructions on these paints, the effect is best achieved, the, the black 
the super black effect is best achieved if you use this and water it down and put it in a airbrush. I don't have an airbrush, so we're just going to do the best we can with these brushes. I don't want to put this on thick, which I'm already failing at. I want to do thin coats. Casual reminder, I am not an artist. Now, for those of you who don't know this, Black 3.0 is put out by a company called Culture Hustle, which is pretty much just a personal company of an artist called Stuart Semple. And as a result of a feud or a rivalry between him and a rather famous artist named Anish Kapoor. Anish Kapoor is, you know, you probably know him best from The Bean in Chicago. He made that. And when Vanta Black came out, the world's blackest material, because it's not a paint, it's it's and it's it needs some specialist application. Uh, it wasn't available to the public and so it wasn't really accessible to most artists but somehow Anish Kapoor got got exclusive artist rights to use it in his art and then Stuart Semple came out with uh with a pigment called the world's pinkest pink and to get it you had to promise that you weren't Anish Kapoor and you weren't going to give it to Anish Kapoor and then he came out with this or black 2.0 which is a commercially available black paint and then now black 3.0 and for anything from Stuart Simple's website you have to click click yes to a disclaimer saying that you are not Anish Kapoor you don't you're not affiliated with him you're not going to give him access to any of this and it's kind of become part of the brand uh, the joke was funny at first but I find it a little bit tiring now I've I've had to order this off this website and you have to confirm like four different times that you are not and will not give this to Anish Kapoor which by the way I don't know Anish Kapoor okay I right, should shake this up first give it a fair fair chance so that's one color of the black 3.0 I'm gonna probably put on a second coat of each of these just to be fair you know obviously it's a little bit glossy because it's wet that's supposed to go away when it dries. I think just brushing it on like that is a lot easier than what I was doing with the dabbing. And now the dollar store paint. Already you can see, I don't know if this picks it up well on camera, but this is a lot less dark than the other two. Now the question is whether this will translate to better thermal absorption. Because just because it's the super blacks are absorbing more visible light doesn't necessarily mean they'll absorb all wavelengths of light because a lot of the heat from light comes from the infrared and ultraviolet ends so hopefully they absorb just as much of those ends of the spectrum as they absorb of the visible spectrum so both of the super blacks caution that the coating is quite fragile, so it shouldn't actually be used in any place where it's going to be coming in physical contact. Now, if I end up using these in a solar water heater, the the pipes will be encased in glass, so I'm not too worried about that. So the things I'm worried about is how hot they get, will they actually stay on the pipes or will they just, just flake off over time, and will they handle being exposed to UV for long periods of time. So my first test here, once, this, once these dry, is to expose these to sunlight and see how hot they get. And then I'm going to encase them in glass and leave them in direct sunlight for like a month. And see if, uh, if they fade or have any failures in that regard. Okay, so these are done being painted. I don't know if it shows up well on camera. But these two in the middle of the super blacks are clearly much more matte than the spray paint. And they're visibly darker than the acrylic paint. The temperature outside right now is about 24 degrees, a little bit cooler here in the garage. It's about 20 degrees in here. So let's move these into the sunlight. I'm going to take readings at 5 minutes, 10 minutes, half hour, and an hour. And we'll see how much they heat up.
Okay, well, it's been another hour since I covered up the test samples. Let's check the temperatures now. Base temperature on the plastic is about 53. Spray paint is 50.4. Black 3.0 is 50.4. So black's about 50, the wind just kicked up, so it's probably cooling things again. Dollar Store brand is 49.2. Copper is 48. So it seems like the Super Blacks aren't absorbing all that much more heat energy than the other Blacks. So that tells me that even though they absorb more visible light, they don't absorb more... UV or infrared and most of the heat is going to be coming from infrared so even though these are quite a bit darker than the other blacks they don't absorb a whole lot more heat and so given their cost they're not a good option for solar water heaters I would learn to test longer but the clouds are starting to roll in so I'm going to lose the light here <laughs> 